Lift our hands to the Most High God and begin to bless His holy name. Let's give Him glory. Let's give Him honor. Let's give Him adoration. Bless His holy name. Worship the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. Let Him hear your voice. Tell Him, Father, I love you. I appreciate you. I give you all glory. I give you all honor. I give you all adoration. Thank you, thank you for loving me. Thank you for everything you've done for me. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. Blessed, blessed, blessed be your holy name. Thank you, Lord. Glory be to your holy name. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have worshipped. I want you to lift your voice to the Almighty God loud and clear and say, Father, Father let, this day let this day be a day I will never forget. Amen. Open your mouth and cry unto him. Amen. Let this day be a day I will never forget for good. Let it be a day of a great turnaround for me. Let it be a day of a great new beginning in my life. Let this day be a day I will never, never forget. Please, Lord, let this day be a day 
I will never forget. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Jehovah, the man of war, his mercy endure forever and ever. Oh, praise his holy name. Amen. Father Almighty, we want to bless your name, King of kings and Lord of lords, the ancient of days, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the one who never lost a war, we bless your holy name. Please accept our worship in Jesus' name. Thank you for all you've done, the various times we have been here at Unilag. Thank you for what we're going to do tonight. Father, accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, we're asking that you please bless this campus like never before. Amen. And all other institutions of higher learning gathered here today, Father, bless them also. Amen. And anyone who might even be following us on the internet, anywhere in the world right now, Father, bless them also. Amen. Father, I'm praying that none of us will go home the way we came in Jesus' name. That we will all live here singing a new song. And let it be a new song of victory. Thank you, Almighty. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. And let someone shout hallelujah. I shook hands with two or three people and said, God is going to surprise you tonight. And then you may please be seated. I listened to the various testimonies very keenly. I saw that one got a miracle while coming. One got a miracle as soon as she arrived. And some got their miracles uh, so they can testify tonight. I am believing God that if you haven't received any miracle yet, you'll get your own right now. Yeah. And maybe I should repeat that one because some people might not have heard me correctly. I said, if you haven't got a miracle yet, you'll get your own right now. Yeah. And that is to say that long before I finish preaching, it will be your turn to testify. Yeah. If you believe that, shout a big hallelujah. Yeah. Well, uh, I'm delighted to be back home. Uh, you shouldn't be surprised that they said I have been here six times. It's difficult to stay away from home. Uh, this university is my home. Uh, well, maybe as we continue, you will hear more about that. 
But in the meantime, let's very quickly go to Second Chronicles chapter 1 from verse 6 to 12. Second Chronicles 1, 6 to 12. And I want to thank God for the young man who preached before me. He did a very great job. Uh, thank God that I had him so that uh, I will not be repeating him. Some of these boys have become so good. You have to pray double when you want to preach after them. Let's give the Lord a big round of applause for that young man. And then, of course, uh, I don't need to begin to tell you that as we go along, I'll be calling on you to stand up to pray. Um, whenever I ask you to stand up to pray, I'm talking to the young ones. The elders are always free to sit down and do their own praying. If they fall asleep while praying, that's no problem. Because the Bible says the old ones shall dream dreams. <laughs> so to be able to dream, they should sleep first. But when I say stand up and let us pray, I'm talking to those who are younger than I. I'm going to be 78 very soon. Uh, so if you are less than 78, when I say stand, you stand. If you are older than 78, you don't need to stand because uh, <laughs> your prayer is a local call. <laughs> Glory be to God. Second Chronicles chapter 1, reading from verse 6. And Solomon went up thither to the brazen altar before the Lord, which was at the tabernacle of the congregation, and offered a thousand burnt offerings upon it. In that night did God appear unto Solomon and said unto him, Ask what I shall give thee. And Solomon said unto God, Thou hast showed great mercy unto David my father, and hast made me to reign in his stead. Now, O Lord God, let thy promise unto David my father be established, for thou hast made me king over a people like the dust of the earth in multitude. Give me now wisdom and knowledge. And somebody will get wisdom tonight. Yeah. That I may, I may go out and come in before these people. For who can judge this that people that is so great? And God said to Solomon, Because this was in thy heart, and thou hast not asked riches, wealth, or honor, nor the life of thy enemies, neither yet hast asked long life, but hast asked wisdom and knowledge for thyself that thou mayest judge my people over whom I have made thee king. Wisdom and knowledge is granted unto thee. Yeah. And I will give thee riches yeah. and wealth yeah. and honor, yeah. such as none of the kings have had that have been before thee, neither shall there any after thee have the like. Yeah. When we say let the fire fall. We are actually saying, let God come down and pay a visit. Why? Because according to Hebrews chapter 12, verse 29, Hebrews 12, verse 29, the Bible says our God is a consuming fire. So God is fire. So when you say let the fire fall, you are asking that God will come down from heaven and pay a visit. Just like the young man before me shared with you, in Exodus chapter 3 from verse 1 to 6, Exodus 3, 1 to 6, when God wanted to visit Moses, he came down in a flame of fire. In Acts chapter 2 from verse 1 to 4, Acts chapter 2 from verse 1 to 4, on the day of Pentecost, when God came down, he came down as clothing tongues of fire. So when we say, let the fire fall, tonight we're actually saying, Almighty God, please come down and pay us a visit. 
Now, when God visits a person, things never remain the same. Whenever God visits anyone, things will never remain the same. For example, in John chapter 5, from verse 2 to 9, John 5, 2 to 9, God visited a congregation of sick people. The Bible said there were a multitude of them there. But he visited one particular person. And from that day onward, the man who had been sick for 38 years was sick no more. And even when doctors have failed, when doctors have tried their best and there's nothing more they could do, if only God can visit, then healing will come. Mark chapter 5, from verse 25 to 34. Mark 5, 25 to 34. It tells us the story of a woman who had had issue of blood for 12 years. Doctors have tried and they have failed. But then God paid a visit. And where doctors had failed, God succeeded. When God pays a visit, the incurable becomes cured. Matthew chapter 8, from verse 1 to 3. Matthew 8, 1 to 3. The Bible says Jesus Christ was coming down from the mountain with a multitude. And there was a leper. And in those days, leprosy was incurable, just like HIV, AIDS, uh, asthma, um, diabetes, cancer. And this particular day, Jesus came down from the mountain. This leper made contact with him, and he was completely healed. I don't know why I'm saying all this at the very beginning, but I believe I have a rough idea that there might be a couple of people here today who are sick. In the name that's above every other name, when the fire falls, your sickness will disappear. Yeah. Now, when he comes down, he could heal by the touch of his hand. And if the need arises, there will be men of God around tonight to lay hands on anybody who might need the laying on of hands. Or he might just speak a word. Because in Psalm 107 verse 20, Psalm 107 verse 20, the Bible said he sent his word and he healed them. In Mark chapter 10, verse 46 to 52, Mark 10, 46 to 52, he didn't touch Bartimaeus. He merely spoke. Because when Bartimaeus came to him and said, I want to receive my sight, he just said, receive your sight. That's why I'm believing God that even while I'm still speaking, somebody will receive healing now. And when God comes down to heal, he will not need the assistance of anyone. He can do it all by himself. In Luke chapter 13, from verse 10 to 17, Luke 13, from verse 10 to 17, the Bible tells us of a woman who was bent double, bound by Satan for a long period of time. When God came down, regardless of the opposition of the people present, he set the woman free. And so I'm decreeing as a representative of the Most High God that whether your enemies like it or not, your doctors will get a surprise. I've told you the story before of a young man who was born blind. And um, I was going around, we were having programs in various towns. And I was in Sapele, preaching like this, when all of a sudden I saw an open vision. 
And I saw this young boy who was born blind, and I saw his eyes opening. And of course, this was several years ago, 1981 or something. I didn't wait for God to complete the story. As soon as I saw the vision, I shouted, ah, there's a boy here, born blind. God wants to open your eyes. Please uh, bring the boy forward. And nobody moved. Ah, but I know what I saw. So I said to the people, oh, maybe the boy is at home. If you are the parent, please go home, go and bring the boy. Nobody moved. I felt that we were about to lose a great miracle. I, so I announced, I said, please, if you don't want to miss the summer, if that's why you are not moving, after I have finished preaching, I will wait. Go home, go and bring the boy. God wants to open a, the boy's eyes today. I waited for one hour and nobody came. So reluctantly, I left Sapele for Akure. By the time I arrived in Akure, because they had waited for me and I didn't come on time, so somebody else was preaching and I was sitting at the back. I just came here quietly, sat down, not to disturb. As I was settling down, all of a sudden, I saw an old man getting up, holding a young boy by hand. And I saw straight away, that's the boy I saw in my vision. And the old man was moving towards the altar. And of course, the <laughs> security people standing before the altar were already moving to go and tell him, please don't disturb the preacher. And so I began to run towards the boy before they threw him into the crowd and we missed him again. As I was running towards the boy, the boy heard my footsteps and turned instinctively. And as he turned, his eyes opened. <laughs> nobody prayed for him. Nobody touched him. But God visited him. I want you to stand on your feet and lift your voice loud and clear and say, Father, please visit us tonight. Please open your mouth and pray. Pray. This is not a joking matter. Visit us tonight. Visit us here at Unilag tonight. Almighty God, visit us tonight. Come down and visit us. Visit us tonight. That's why we are gathered together. It is unto you we are gathered, Lord. And you promise that where two or three are gathered together in your name, you'll be there. Father, please visit us tonight. Visit us tonight. Almighty God, please visit us tonight. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. So shall it be in Jesus' name. Please be seated. But then when God comes down to visit, usually he locates an individual in the crowd. The people may be many, but he will go straight for the person for whom he has come. For example, in Exodus chapter 3, that we mentioned earlier, verse 1 to 6, Exodus 3, 1 to 6, Moses was at the backside of the desert, but God located him, because God knows your address. We are many here, but he knows where you came from, he knows your problems, he knows why he will want to come down on this particular day for a particular person. I was joking with uh, some of my brethren uh, early this morning when I arrived. I said, I gave a date when I will be coming for this Holy Ghost service. And the people here wrote to me to say, oh, that day is not convenient. So I, Professor Ababa said, what? I said, well, only Unilever can do that. <laughs> 
but we were, we were just joking. The reason that day was inconvenient was because the one that God wants to bless will not be present that day. This is the day he has chosen for a particular person whose miracle can no longer wait. If you are the one, let me hear you shout hallelujah. If you look at the story of Bartimaeus in Mark chapter 10 from verse 46 to 52, Mark 10, 46 to 52, there were many people there that day and Bartimaeus was sitting by the roadside. There was a multitude following Jesus. But there's one fellow for whom Jesus Christ came to town. And that was the one who got a miracle. In the passage I mentioned earlier on in John chapter 5, from verse 2 to 13, John 5, 2 to 13, by the pool of Bethesda, there was a multitude. But only one fellow, Jesus healed just one fellow. And he departed from there. In Psalm 115, verse 3, Psalm 115, verse 3, the Bible made it clear that God behaves like this because he's sovereign. He said, our God is in the heavens, and he does as he pleases. Nobody can query him. Nobody can say, why is it a boy that you visited and not a girl? Nobody can say, why is it a girl and not a woman? No, nobody can query him. He does as he pleases. And then he said in Romans chapter 9, from verse 15 to 16, Romans 9, 15 to 16, he said, I will be merciful unto whom I be merciful. I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. Uh, I thank God when I had the uh, brother taking the offering, singing that song that has become my favorite. Uh, I thank God that I obtained mercy because it's not everybody who will obtain mercy. And there's somebody here tonight that is going to obtain mercy. Yeah. If you are the one, let me hear you shout hallelujah. We had a Holy Ghost service, a Holy Ghost Congress, we used to call it there, in Ibadan, Ibadan Grammar School, several years ago. I think must have been uh, in the 70s. There was a crowd there. The program lasted from Good Friday to Easter Monday. But there was this man, when he was going abroad, he was a native of Ondo, when he gained admission to go and study abroad, the parents gave a party. And during the celebration, an enemy of the family applied uh, a charm to the young man. He said, look at the son of so and so, he too, he too is going abroad. Let's give him something to carry along. So the young man got abroad and started feeling this strange pain in his stomach. I think he went to America. And you know, he went to the best hospitals there. They checked him head to toe. Everything that could be checked, they checked. They said, young man, there's nothing wrong with you. The pain you say you are feeling must be in your imagination. Ah. He boy, he boy said, I'm not that young that I won't know what I'm suffering. Anyway, he was there, he studied, he got his PhD, six years of pain. Then he came back and began to lecture at Amadou Bello University, seeing pain. Then somebody told him, ah, there is going to be a gathering at Ibadan. And this, uh, we've had that miracles will happen there. Go. So he took off. And he began to come. And because the devil knew that he was going to receive a miracle, the devil did everything to stop him. The journey that would have taken a day took him three days. By the time he arrived, we were about to finish. I was just preaching like this, and all of a sudden, 
I heard somebody shouting, it is gone, it is gone. Later on, when he was sharing his testimony, he said, as the word of God was going forward, that thing that had been burning like fire inside him just disappeared. In that name that's above every other name, whatever it is that I'll be hidden in your system that is not of God, we go tonight. But I will want you to lift your voice to the Almighty God and say, Father, Father. if you are visiting two people, let me be one of them. Go ahead, open your mouth. Cry to him. If you are visiting only two people, please let me be one of them. Locate me. Locate me, O oh Lord. Locate me, O oh Lord. Please, Almighty God, if you are visiting two people here tonight, let me be one of them. Let me be one of them. Look at me, Almighty God. I know we are many here, but please, Lord, look at me. Visit me. Let me be that person for whom you are firing this meeting. Look at me, O oh Lord. Look at me, O oh Lord. Locate me, O oh Lord. Visit me. Visit me, Almighty God. Visit me. So that every plant that you have not planted in my system will be uprooted right now. Right now. Please locate me. Visit me tonight. Thank you, Almighty God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. So shall you be. Please be seated. And then, the third thing you need to note, which is the reason why we chose the particular text we read, is that when God comes visiting like that, it is to guarantee that the, every prayer will be answered. Not only that, he will also give the individual he has come to visit a blank check. You know the meaning of a blank check? Uh, it's a check that has been signed by someone who is extremely wealthy and is asking you to write any amount. I'm rejoicing in my spirit with somebody, someone for whom God arranged this meeting. Today, you will have freedom to ask anything from God. Now we all know in Jeremiah 33, verse 3. Oh, thank you, Father. <laughs> the Lord says there's someone here tonight. He said, before you leave this place, you will get two touches from him. Uh, that must be me. <laughs> In Jeremiah 33, verse 3, God made a promise. He said, if you call on me, I will answer you. In John chapter 14, verse 14, John chapter 14, verse 14, Jesus Christ said, if you ask anything, that's a blank check, if you ask anything in my name, I will do it for you. In John 16, verse 24, John 16, verse 24, Jesus Christ said, Ask till your joy be full. And we find God saying to Solomon in the text we read, Ask anything you want. That's a blank check from the owner of heaven and the earth. But you see, it, with all these prayers, uh, all these promises of God to answer prayers, there is one major condition. And that condition is in Isaiah 55 verse 6. Isaiah 55 verse 6. He said, Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he is near. We have always wondered, how do we know when God is near? Because he's invisible. If I turn to my right, it might not be there. 
If I'm thinking he's coming from the right, he might be coming from the left. If I think he's coming from the front, he might be coming from behind. But when he's visiting me, when he's the one who himself decides to visit, then I don't need to worry about whether he's near or far, because he will be right there. Tonight I want to tell you two stories before you pray your next prayer. The first one is to tell you, if you are the one is visiting tonight, when you pray, you will get the answer. Amen. There was this young girl from a very, very poor family. The mother happens to be a cleaner at Ron. Redeemers University. From all indications, this girl cannot see how she could ever become a graduate. But she had my testimony once, how uh, my parents were so poor, poor people were calling them poor. And so she cried unto God, if we could do it for the Jew, uh, you should be able to do it for me. I too want to become a graduate. On the day she was graduating, I just happened to be there. Not only was she first class, she was the best graduating student of that year. How God did it? Let's leave the details out. When you are asking God to do something for you, don't think about how he will do it. There's a blank check before you today. Please make sure that you write a lot on that check. I will tell you another story. This one you probably have heard before. I heard the story. Uh, they told me, the fellow who told me is somebody who should know. They said once upon a time there was a man in Lagos who was extremely wealthy. His name was Darucha. Extremely wealthy. And when the relatives go to him to ask for money, he won't give them. He will say, I work for mine, go and work for your own. But the relatives discovered that he had a great love for children. So whenever they wanted something from him, they would take a child. After they've greeted him, they know sooner or later he's going to ask the child, hey, hello, little girl, little boy, what can I do for you? So the relatives will coach the little girl or little boy, ask for this, ask for that. So on one occasion, a woman took a girl to go and visit Darucha. As usual, and Darucha was aware of the trick, he didn't mind. And the woman had told the girl, he's going to ask you what you want. Tell him you want houses, you want lands, you want cars, and I will give you cookies. Okay? So they got there, as usual, Darucha came and asked the little girl, girl, what do you want? The girl said, cookies. Darucha knew that, oh, something has gone wrong here. So he pretended not to have heard. He went inside the room to allow the woman to reprogram. <laughs> so the woman reprogrammed the child and said, hey, I'm the one who will give you cookies. Ask for houses, ask for land, ask for cars, and I will give you cookies. And Darucha came out. And said, hey, my little girl, what do you say you want? The girl said, cookies. Stand on your feet. Don't ask for cookies tonight. Lift your voice to the almighty God and say, Father. Just go ahead. Tell him what you want him to, tell, to give you. Go ahead. You, 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 you have a blank check now. Go ahead. Tell God what you want him to do for you. Stop asking for small things. He has the ability to meet all our needs. 
Oh, you want to be first class? Go ahead, ask him. You want a double promotion this year? Go ahead, ask him. He more than enough. Ask him. He can do all things. Don't ask for small things tonight. A night like this comes only once in a lifetime. Ask him for great things. Ask for your relatives who are at home who might be in need of help. In need of healing. In need of deliverance. Ask him for something big. Something big. Something only God can do. Don't ask for cookies. Oh, thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Pray for another one minute and then begin to bring your prayer to a close. Ask him for mighty things. He is the almighty God. Whatever you think is hard for you is nothing with him. It's absolutely nothing with him. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. And so shall it be in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated. And then he said to Solomon, after Solomon had asked for wisdom, because he gave him a blank check, whatever you want, ask. And Solomon said, I want wisdom. I said, all right. The wisdom and honor you asked for, you have received. And may I decree in the name that's above every other name that the prayer you have just prayed is already answered. Yeah. But then God now said, that which you didn't ask for, I will add. Yeah. When God decides to visit on his own, he gives more than you ask for. Why? Because he is the all-sufficient one. Genesis 17 verse 1. Genesis 17 verse 1 calls him the all-sufficient God. Jehovah El Shaddai. In James chapter 1 verse 5, James 1 verse 5, he says, when especially you ask for wisdom, he will give liberally generously. Psalm 68 verse 19 Psalm 68 verse 19 says he, he doesn't give us benefits by beats. He loads us with benefits on a daily basis. In Psalm 23 verse 5 Psalm 23 verse 5 David said thou anointed my head with oil my cup runs over and I've shared with some of you before, the first time I read that passage, I stopped. I said, Lord, when his cup was full, why didn't you stop? Why the wastage? Why the running over? He said, son, I just want to show him there's much more where this one is coming from. Oh, thank you, my father. Daddy asked me to tell someone we ask you to relax, he will finish that project. Yeah. Oh, that, that must be good news for so many people. <laughs> and the amen is very loud. Well, maybe I better say amen too because, <laughs> because I have projects of my own too that must be finished. Glory be to God. I think it was 1985, I went to South Korea because I had, I had become general overseer in 1981 
I've done everything I could do. Uh, if you put every member of the church together by 1985, we were just about 2,000. I fasted, I prayed, and then all of a sudden, I heard that there is a church in South Korea where the congregation is more than 350,000. Ah. And that the man there was holding a minister's conference, so I went. Uh, when I got there, and I saw the crowd, I mean, I attended this church. He had a very big auditorium, and he was holding seven services on Sunday. And he, he got up, and he was appealing to those who came to church, saying, those of you who are in church today, please don't come next Sunday, so that those who couldn't be accommodated this Sunday might be accommodated next Sunday. You can be sure when I had an opportunity to pray, I prayed, Almighty God, give me a congregation like this, please. I mean, if, if your congregation is 2,000 and you see a man with a congregation of 350,000, that's a long way off. Just to show you that God can do more than you ask for. Today, at least during the last convention, the children alone must have been about half a million. God can do much more than you can ask for. I'll tell you another story. I went to America to visit Kenneth Hagin. Some of you have had part of the story. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had an opportunity to meet with him. And when it was time to, to, for prayer, because it, those who went with me were asking for all manners of things, books, tapes, etc. I said, uh, when he finally came to me, I was the one who booked the appointment, but I was the one he asked last. I said, sir, everything that is in you, that makes you you, that's what I want. He laid his hand on me, and I was sure I got what I wanted. Then he, he died about uh, a couple of years ago, and they were listing his achievements. And one of the things they listed was the number of students that had graduated from his Bible college. They were over 4,000. But that year, that year alone in Nigeria, the people who graduated from our own Bible college were more than 6,000. What he got all lifelong, God had given me more than that within a year. Because this God is all sufficient. So I want you to stand on your feet and cry to the Almighty God and say, Father, give me more than I've ever asked for. Please open your mouth and pray. These are not small prayers. Give me more. Much more than I've ever asked for. Give me much more. Much more. Much more than I've ever, ever asked for. Give me much more than I've ever asked for. Thank you, Jesus. Give me much more than I've ever asked for. Much more, much, much more. You are the all-sufficient God. Give me much more than I've ever asked for. Much more, much more, much more than I've ever asked for. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. So shall it be in Jesus' name. Amen. And then the fifth thing, please be seated. God bless you. 
The fifth thing is that in speaking to Solomon, God said, by the time I finish with you, there will be no king like you before you. There will be no king like you after you. Meaning what? When God comes down in fire, he can make you unique. <laughs> it is true God created every man equal. Acts chapter 17 verse 26. Acts 17 verse 26. From the same blood, he has created all nations. So whether they are white or yellow or black, you go inside, the blood is there and the blood is red. We are all created equal. And he created everybody in his own image, according to Genesis chapter 1, from verse 26 to 27. Genesis 1, 26 to 27. We are all made in his own image. But then that's where he stopped. Because in his own wonderful way, he can make somebody greater than somebody else. The Bible says he lifts up one, brings down another. First Samuel chapter 2, verse 7. And in Numbers chapter 12, from verse 5 to 8, Numbers 12, verse 5 to 8. Ah, thank you, Father. The Lord asked me to tell someone here tonight, he said, your academic barrenness ends this year. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's good news. That's good news. Because I remember when I was here that uh, if, if, if a lecturer wasn't producing learned uh, papers, I mean papers in learning journals, we used to say is academically barren. Hmm. Barrenness over. Thank you, Father. So he, 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 he chose, he said concerning Moses in Numbers chapter 12, verse 5 to 8. <laughs> okay. The Lord said there's someone here. He said that the, the only way to describe your situation is that there's something biting you inside your head. Biting. Biting. He asked me to tell you, if you check, you will notice the biting has stopped and it will never return. So in Numbers, Numbers chapter 12, he said concerning Moses, he said, my servant Moses is different. So I, I talk to I talk to prophets, I talk to some of them in dreams and visions. But in the case of Moses, he said, I speak to him mouth to mouth. He was talking about David in Acts chapter 13, from verse 21 to 22. Acts 13 from verse 21 to 22. He said, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. I have found a man. I mean, see, he was looking, and suddenly he found one fellow, and that fellow became unique. When you read Genesis chapter 5, verse 24, Genesis 5, verse 24, you discover that Enoch was different. He was unique. He never tasted death. The Bible said Enoch walked with God and was not, because God took him. Oh, there was somebody who could have been close to him. That's in 2 Kings chapter 2, from verse 9 to 12. 2 Kings chapter 2, 9 to 12. That was Elijah. But in his own case, he was also unique because we didn't know when God took Enoch, but when God was taking Elijah, he sent his special car to go and bring him home. That was unique. Nobody again had gone that way. And then, God is saying to somebody here today, because my fire is going to fall, 
you too will become unique. Yeah. You know, in, in, in the academic world, we have some unique people. There's this man called Pythagoras. I'm sure you've heard, of, of heard, you've heard his name. Uh, he was a mathematician. He spent his whole life doing mathematics, but he was known for one theorem. He just proved one theorem, and anytime, anywhere you go, people talk about Pythagoras' theorem. And then there was this man who also was very, very good in algebra. Forgive me, you know I'm a mathematician, I have to talk mathematics somehow. He was so good in a particular section of algebra that they name it after him, and they call it Boolean algebra. Forgive me, I, 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 I'm not used to boasting, I don't want to boast. But I just want to tell you there's somebody standing before you now that is unique. Just wait, I'm going to prove it to you now. I am the first to have MSc Mathematics of the University of Lagos. I am the first to have PhD Mathematics of the University of Lagos. I am the first to have three postgraduate degrees of the University of Lagos. I work for two, they dash me the third one. If you think that is boasting, now you sabi. The thing I'm saying is that God can make you stand on your feet and cry unto him and say, Father, make me uniquely good, uniquely great. Go ahead, talk to the almighty God. He can make you great, uniquely. He can make you uniquely outstanding. He, he, he can do so. He can do so. He can do so. Call on him. I want to be unique. I want to be outstanding. I want to be different from all those who have gone before, different from all those who will ever come after me. Make me unique. Lord God Almighty, make me unique. Make me unique, Lord. Make me absolutely unique. Uniquely good. Uniquely great. Uniquely outstanding. Make me unique. Make me unique. Thank you, Father. Glory be to your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. And so shall it be in Jesus' name. Please be seated. We're almost there. Now, this story of God visiting Solomon is recorded in two different passages in the Bible. The text that I read to you the other one you will find in 1 Kings chapter 3, from verse 3 to 15. 1 Kings chapter 3, from verse 3 to 15. In that second rendition of the same story, there is a statement made that is very important. They said, Solomon woke up, and behold, it was a dream. God can give you a miracle that for days you would think you are dreaming. Amen. When you look at people like Naaman, say 2 Kings chapter 5, from verse 1 to 14. 2 Kings 5, 1 to 14. 
This man who was a leper, who dipped himself in Jordan seven times, and when he came out, the Bible said his skin was like that of a newborn baby. I can assure you, when he woke up the following morning, and he checked, and instead of the leprosy that he had been carrying about for all these years, he would think, I thought I was dreaming. When you consider the story of a widow in 2 Kings chapter 4, from verse 1 to 7, 2 Kings 4, verse 1 to 7, the widow who was so poor that the creditors wanted to sell her sons into bondage, and then she came to the man of God, and the man of God told him, uh, go borrow empty vessels, shut the door on yourself, and begin to pour the little oil you say you have into the empty vessels. As she was pouring, and the oil kept on flowing, if you ask her, she will say, am I dreaming? When you consider the story of Daniel, uh, of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, in Daniel chapter 3, from verse 1 to the end, you know the story, Daniel chapter 3. When they were being thrown into the fairy furnace, they had already said bye-bye. But when suddenly they discovered, uh, they, <laughs> they were standing, the ropes had been burnt. There was this uh, fourth man walking and talking with us. They must have thought, this must be a dream. And then as they came out of the fire, the king that said, throw them into the fire, said, promote them. Uh -uh. Are you sure we are not dreaming? When you read Acts chapter 12, from verse 1 to 11, Acts chapter 12, from verse 1 to 11, the Bible tells us that when Peter was in prison and he was going to be killed the following morning, he was sleeping, then an angel came, woke him up, and told him to dress up. Uh, the, 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 the chains fell up, and as they were walking out, the doors began to open on their own. The Bible said he thought it was a vision. This can be real. Do you know I have good news for somebody here tonight? A miracle is coming your way. For a long time, you would think you are dreaming. Yeah. Let me give you an illustration. <laughs> I say amen with you too. <laughs> Again, you, you've had me share this testimony before. Only there's a section of it. You know, there are some testimonies. You can't finish it all. It was when I was on this campus, getting ready for my PhD. I've been working on the same problem for 18 months. I ended up with 176 simultaneous equations. Got to a stage I didn't even know what to do anymore. And I didn't want to cancel that one. To cancel that means to go and start afresh with another problem. Another problem that I don't even know whether it will also have a solution. And then one night I was reading Exodus 14, the crossing of the Red Sea. After I've looked at my problems and I was tired, just push it aside and let me read my Bible and then go to bed. And God spoke to me. I said, son, bring your, bring your problem. I was I was surprised, pleasantly surprised. So I brought the brought the equations out. And he began to guide me. Put this one on the left, put this one on the right, put this one on the left, put this one on the right. Ah, God will visit somebody here today. And suddenly I saw that all the equations on the left. They all had something in common. All those on the right, they had something in common. But because I've jumped everything together, I didn't see. 
So he said, solve the one on the left together, solve the one on the right together, and then bring the two together. He said, that's what happened at the crossing of the Red Sea. The sea parted into two, the children of Israel passed on dry land, and the sea came together again. Five hours later, brethren, five hours later, my PhD thesis was ready. Now, the point I'm, I'm about to make is this. After that, I slept. And this sleep was deep. You know that kind of sleep that when you wake up, you won't know where you are. Uh -huh. And you have to wait for some time to, to... I'm sure you know that kind of sleep. And, and when I woke up like that, I said, ah, I had a dream last night. A dream that showed me how to solve my problem. So I got up quickly to go and pick the problem where I left it. And I realized, I've already solved the problem. <laughs> I've already written the thesis. Stand on your feet and cry to the Almighty God. I said, Father, Father tonight, Give me a dream like miracle. Open your mouth and cry unto him. The kind of miracle that I, I would think I must be dreaming. I must be dreaming. I, 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 I must be dreaming. This can't be true. I must be dreaming. Oh, Lord God Almighty, give me that kind of miracle. That kind of miracle that I will say, Ah, God, if, if, if this is a dream, don't let me wake up. Oh, Lord, give, give me a dream-like miracle. A miracle so big. A miracle so amazing. That for, for, for days to come, I would think I, I must be dreaming. Ah, Lord God Almighty, give me a dream-like miracle. Give me a dream like miracle. Please, Lord, give me a dream like miracle. The kind of miracle, Lord God Almighty, that I will, I will, I will say, ah, ah, this must be a dream. This must be a dream. This must, well, this must have been a very good dream. That kind of dream like miracle, Lord, please give to me. Give to me tonight. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Almighty God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. And so shall it be in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated. I want to close now. Uh, we could continue and continue, but <laughs> half, half a word is enough for the wise. You must have noticed that in all the prayers I've asked you to pray up to this moment, I've not even asked you to pray that the fire will fall. Why? Be <laughs> all right, all right, all right. We will see. When the fire of God falls, it depends on what side of him you are on. God is love. If you are on his side of love, oh, when the fire falls, it will be for your benefit. And he says, I love those who love me. But God is not just love, he's also consuming fire. If you are on the wrong side of him, and the fire falls, it will be to consume. I'll give you just one example. In Judges chapter 15, you can read the whole story. Judges 15. The relatives of Samson brought him bound and handed him over to the enemies. Enemies at home presented him to enemies outside the home. They said, finish him. 
But the fire fell. And the fire that fell burned the ropes binding Samson. And he got up and got the jawbone of an ass. But the fire that had fallen on him flowed into the jawbone of an ass. And with that jawbone of an ass, he killed a thousand Philistines. The same fire that fell, that liberated Samson, is the fire that fell that destroyed a thousand enemies of God. I've been working with God now for quite a while. I know him to be a very, very good friend. I know him to be a very, very dangerous enemy. Very, very dangerous enemy. That's why I'm appealing to you, because later on, you and I are going to join forces together and call on God to send down his fire. And he will do so. I trust him. Because he chose this topic for tonight. But before we call on him to send down fire, please, if you are not on his right side, if you are not one of his children, if you are not yet born again, if you are still living in sin, I appeal to you, do one of two things. Either you come now and surrender your life to him so that his fire, when it falls, will be to burn away your yokes, set you free, and all the beautiful things you have had will be yours. Or if you know you don't want to come, I appeal to you. Before we cry to God to say, let the fire fall, just sneak away. Because the fire is going to fall here tonight. So if you are here and you are not yet born again, or you are not sure of your salvation, I appeal to you, come now. I'm going to count from 1 to 12. Before I say 12, come immediately. Thank God, some of them are already here. Come immediately. Before the fire falls, come and surrender your life to him now. He's the one calling you. Come immediately. And if you think you can escape him by running away, he may meet you on the way. It will be advisable that you come and surrender your life to him now. Let him save your soul. Come very quickly. Three. Four. Five. Those of you who are clapping, your hands will never be empty. Six. Seven. Eight. The choice is yours. Come, be saved, become a friend of Jesus Christ. And when the fire falls, it will be for your benefit. Or if you like, you can refuse to come and dare him and see how mighty he can be. Nine. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. Ten. Eleven. And the final call down. Come up quickly, come on quickly. 
Glory be to God. Come. Now, those of us who are already in front and those who are on the way, cry to Jesus and say, Lord, have mercy on me. Save my soul. Who am I to resist you? Just save my soul. And I want to be your child. I don't want to live a life of sin anymore. I don't want to have anything to do with the devil anymore. I've come to surrender my life to you. Have mercy on me. Save my soul. Save my soul, oh Lord. Please save my soul. And the rest of us, please stretch your hands towards these our new brothers and sisters and intercede for them. Pray that the one who has saved your soul will save their own souls also. Please intercede for them. Pray that the blood of Jesus Christ will wash away all their sins and that God will give them a brand new beginning. Intercede for them, brethren. Intercede for them. Oh, pray for them, brethren. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, save my soul. I'm surrendering my life to you completely. I will do your will from now on. Just save my soul. Forgive my sins, Lord. And I will do your will for the rest of my life. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. My Father, my God, I want to thank you for your word. I want to give you all glory and honor for these wonderful children of yours. Thank you that they've decided at long last to surrender to you. Please remember your promise that whosoever will come unto you, you will no wise cast out. They are here now, Father. Please receive them. Yes. Have mercy on them. Yes. Save their souls. Yes. Write their names in the book of life. Yes. Receive them into the family of God. Yes. And Lord, from now on, any time they call on you, answer them by fire. Yes. And let them serve you to the very end. Yes. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Yes. Amen. Amen. Now, those of you in front, let me hear you shout hallelujah. hallelujah. I rejoice with you. Because from now on, by the grace of God, every day of my life, I'll be praying for you. And that's why I'm going to need your names, your address, and your prayer requests. The counselors will give you a card very soon. And you fill that card. And return it to them before you go back to your seats. We'll wait for you till you finish before we continue. God bless you.
Thank you, Lord. Now, we want to do two things together. One, we are going to pray. And uh, in case you want to write down your prayer points, uh, you can do so now. You're going to, first of all, thank God that he arranged this meeting for you. That is, if it is true of you, you say, Father, I thank you for arranging this meeting for me. Then you are going to cry unto him and say, let your fire fall on me and release my potential. You see, every firewood has the potential of becoming fire. But until fire falls on the wood, it will remain ordinary wood. So let your fire fall on me and release my potential. The second prayer you will pray, or the third one, will be, Father, let your fire fall for me and give me irreversible victory. You see, because when fire burns, it burns irreversibly. Whatever fire has burnt cannot come back to what it used to be. So, if fire falls for you, the victory it gives you will be irreversible. And then the fourth prayer will be let your fire fall on me so that I become untouchable to my enemies. Nobody can touch fire. If they do, they are the one who will pay for it. So, let your fire fall for me so I become untouchable to my enemies. And then finally, you will say, Lord, let your fire fall on me so that wherever I go, I'll be a carrier of your fire. When the fire falls on firewood, and it becomes fire everywhere it goes now, it will be fire. Let your fire fall on me, so I become a carrier of your fire. Now that's for everybody. Now there are some special cases, and I will mention all of them together before, if you are one of them, you begin to come forward, because you, you will need to come forward uh, brethren, you will move back a little so that the men of God who have been praying with me, waiting on the Lord, will lay hands on you to break the yoke. The Lord says there is, there is at least someone here tonight that the trouble with your brain is as a result of your taking drugs. The drugs, hard drugs, had fried your brain. That's the word he used. The brain is fried. But he wants to give you a brand new one. Amen. Don't come yet. Uh, let me finish. Then he also said there's someone here, he said your brain behaves funny. He said, when I explain, you will know you are the one. He said, one moment you are brilliant. I mean, when you think you, you amaze even yourself, you think brilliantly. Another moment, 
you're almost like a dullard. So your brain is up now, down next, behaving like a yo-yo. He also says he wants to give you a brand new one that will not behave like that, it will not be behaving normal. And then he says there are some here who have entered into a covenant with blood that you have tasted human blood in the process of entering into a covenant. You are regretting it and you didn't know what to do about it, but he says he will break the yoke tonight. If you will come. So, if you belong to that category, any of the three categories that I've mentioned, please come. If you like, don't come. I don't know you. It is God who has told me what's going on. And he knows all things. And I will want you to be in lines going all the way. When one line is full, please arrange a second line, and then a third line, and then a fourth line. And please, men of God, kindly help me to go and lay hands on these wonderful people. Form lines so that these men of God will be able to reach those who are behind and go all the way to the rope over there. Go all the way, there's a rope down there. Go all the way down. Please, ushers, help me. I hope ushers can hear me. Or at least somebody can hear me who can help. Let them go all the way down. That the first line and then the second line. That there must be space between one line and the other so that the men of God will be able to come in between and minister to you very quickly. In the meantime, the rest of us, let's go ahead and begin to cry unto the Almighty God. First of all, thank Him that He has arranged this meeting for your sake. Make the prayer sincere. And then cry unto Him that He should give you, that He should release your potential. Your potential for greatness. Your potential for glory that his fire should fall on you and release your potential. That his fire will fall for you and give you irreversible victory. And then that the fire will fall on you so that you become untouchable to the enemies. And that the fire will fall for you so that wherever you go, you become a carrier of his fire. And brethren, don't stay in the front row alone. Be in the other rows too, so that we can finish on time. Let's go ahead and pray for these people. And once they have laid hands on you, you are free to go back to your seat, so that we will know those who are yet to be laid hands on. Once they have laid hands on you, please go back to your seats, so we know those who are left. The rest of us, please cry unto God. Thank him for tonight, specially arranged for you. Cry unto him that the fire will fall so that your potential will be released. Call on him that the fire will fall for you so you have irreversible victory. Call on him that you will become untouchable for the enemy and that you will become a carrier of his fire.
Let us begin to bring our prayers to a close. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. In the name that's above every other name, I hereby decree that the fire of God will fall. That your potential for greatness will be released tonight. Amen. That the victory you are getting from God today will be irreversible. Amen. From now on, you become untouchable to the enemy. And wherever you go, you will carry the fire of God. This is a night you will never forget. Much more than you have ever asked for, God will do for you. It shall be well with you. And you too, you will serve the Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. 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 Let me hear somebody shout a big hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is anyone here tonight who has been blessed? Are you sure? So you will want another Holy Ghost service here? Yeah? <laughs> when? <laughs> somebody said next year, somebody said next month. <laughs> Another one said tomorrow. <laughs> well, what I know is that if you are grateful to God, he has a way of doing more for you than you've ever had from him. So tonight we want to round up by thanking the almighty God for what he has done. You take a thanksgiving offering with joy in your heart you dance to the nearest basket and drop your offering and then the organizers will uh, continue with the grace and any special announcement if you got the biggest miracle of tonight let your hallelujah be the loudest And then with joy in your heart, with dancing and rejoicing, and music from the musician, dance to the nearest basket and drop your thanksgiving offering. And in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, every trace of poverty in your life is consumed by fire tonight.